Welcome back, everyone. Shelly, your quilts are amazing. Oh, thank you. And they're precisionly, perfectly put together. So what we're gonna do, you guys, is we're gonna take a real simple block, like a nine patch, and while Shelly pieces the nine patch, she's gonna share with you all the tips and tricks that she uses to get that kind of result. How many out there want to get this kind of result? Yeah, yeah right? Right. So um, let's start with sewing a seam and getting it all right. Do you wanna start there? Sure. Okay. So I've got the nine patch already started and I have put the two fabrics right sides together and pressed, sewn and pressed to one side and I'm going to start the next one and I'll show, walk you through okay, that. Okay, great. So here we go, I like your iron, don't lose that one. I really like that I iron. I know. So wait, whoa, 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 what oh, are you doing? I'm gluing. So what we have here is acorn precision piecing Glue. Okay, let me hold that up for the camera. So, I mean, this is a secret component that you will not share with us, right, Bernie? That's right. We call this seam align. Okay. It's a glue that we developed. Shelly's been a, I call her a professional gluist for years. <laughs> and some of the products she's used didn't lend themselves well to this. They uh -huh. were great products uh -huh. and were great for other jobs, but for this, they weren't exactly right. So we kind of went to work. It took us about three and a half years to come up with this. Yeah, and look at, you didn't go, you just went dot, dot, I, dot, dot, right? That's right, I put tiny little pinhead sized dots okay. in the seam allowance. Okay. And you have time here. You notice they didn't soak into the fabric. You've no, I said you're going, with this. Yeah. do you have to get this thing together here? You no, you, okay. have, you have time to pick up your next piece and put them right sides together. And what I'm doing here is I wanna make sure that my edges are lined up exactly. So let's look at this. So this side you see green, and then this side you see the beige. So it is perfect. You know, I think people are sloppy with that. Sometimes you can get a little off. Yeah. And that does, it, it does make a difference in your precision with your patchwork. Okay. And I know we're talking a nine patch here, but this kind of, um, precision and and attention to detail is important whether you're working with a nine patch or you're working with a block that has a zillion three. pieces exactly. yeah okay yeah. and you don't pin because tell me why I for sure want to use this because when you start to put pins in the seam allowance here they are going to distort your fabric and then when you get things lined up exactly the way you want it and then you take it to the machine the first thing you're going to have to do when that foot comes up to that pin is you're going to have to remove it. Right. And now your fabric gets to have a little shifting part. You're right. You're and, right. And then you don't know if they're lined up. So this way with the glue, I know I'm completely lined up. Now, how do you know time. it's ready to go to the machine? Well, what I need to do next is press. Okay. And I press for between five to 10 seconds. It doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. And now I know that this is not going to shift. Because it's dried. It's dried. Okay. It's, the glue is set. Now, my guess is you use a single whole throat plate. I do. I have a straight stitch plate on my machine. And I've also started with what I call a header. Mm -hmm. And I sew on the header. It's two pieces of fabric that are, I put them wrong sides together because I like to look at the pretty side. <laughs> it's your and little payback. It, it, it really is. And I do cut them the size I want. That's just the way I am. Okay. And so what I did is I stitched until my needle is right off the edge of the fabric. I raised the presser foot and then I'm going to stitch. And what I'm doing is lining up the fabric right along the edge of the presser foot. Mm -hmm. Because I have established my seam allowance and I know that that's where my fabric needs to be okay. for this presser foot. And then do you, then you end with fabric or what? I yes. do, so I end with a needle right off the edge of the fabric and then I put what I like to call a footer at the end of my piecing. Why two fabrics? Why not just one? Because I'm usually sewing through two pieces of okay. fabric and it seems to work better. I think our mechanic can tell us about yeah. that. Bernie, can you grab the scissors over there? Well, oh, here's some here. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, tell us, Bernie. Uh, why do uh, I uh, want to sew through two pieces? I wanted to explain why Shelly st starts with the needle one stitch off the fabric. 
then puts her piece or okay. two pieces in off the off the header. She stops with the needle one stitch off the header, needle okay. down. Okay. And then she puts her two pieces that she's joining in. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that if you're going to have inaccuracy, it's usually at the very beginning and at the very end. You're of right. Because you trail joining. off at the end. Yeah, too bad. Yeah. Okay, now press in. Okay, so I want to set the seam, mm -hmm. and I'm going to press to the dark, and I'm going to let my fingers do the work of the iron at first, mm -hmm. and that is I'm just pressing the seam right to the thread. And that's why I want to make sure when I'm sewing that I'm sewing with a nice straight line, right. a nice straight seam. Right. And what can happen when you're sewing it or when you're pressing, you can see that this piece isn't laying It's jumping up. It is. And so now I'm going to apply this uh, easy press with my easy press pen. I'm going to apply. What is that? What's in there? What in your, or, or you cannot tell oh, us. I can't tell you exactly what's in it. Uh -huh. It's a proprietary thing that uh -huh. we've come up with. It's a starch-like solution, but not like anything out there. I think you'll notice when Shelly's done here that you're not going to find any kind of a sheen or any kind of flakes. And it's everything lays very flat. And what she doesn't have to do here is beat the fabric into submission. It's a very gentle procedure. And so you can see that she's ended up with very, very straight edges. Oh, it's beautiful. So when she goes to nest seams now, they're very accurate. Right. Now you have a cool cutting trick that I have never seen I before. Do. Okay. Because okay. we've got to cut it into now pieces that we can stitch. So I am in, I am into precision piecing and cutting and these rulers here I really like to work with. By the way, we really love these creative grid rulers. Do because, you? Oh, they're so accurate. They're nice. They grip the fabric. They have the lines at every eighth of an inch and, and I can see clearly when I'm lining up my pieces. Okay. And so I'm just choosing any of these horizontal lines to line up my seams with. I lay them, put them right sides together, move this apart. Then you've got your 90 degree. That's the thing. I do. Yeah. yeah, very important. If you are, if you tend to have the, sometimes the piece wants to pull away from the ruler. So what I like to do is just give a little push at the tip and cut. And then huh. you don't end up with that piece. Sometimes when you're cutting, the piece pulls up and then snaps back and you end up with a little triangle at the end. Okay, so but then why is, I mean, that. is it important that this thing stays on the piece I do. or what? I'm, I'm in the habit of just leaving it on the piece because these are smaller pieces. And as you're cutting, they do tend to stray. They'll move away oh. from, from your cut okay. and then you have to realign everything. Okay. So I just do a little cut here. I have not seen that before. And then a little cut there. Have you guys seen this before? No. no. Yeah. All right. So you've got this. Now cut, oh, let's, let's go down to here. Now what I want you to do is, you've got all these pieces. Now now let's just see what you're made of. Okay. Because we've got to line these things up, okay? Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Because I don't know that I could do it without my pins. This is where the glue really comes in handy. Yeah. She puts, yeah. She puts the dot right in the low side here of the ditch. Right uh -huh. on the low side. Where they nest. Okay. And also one place we really want to pay attention to is our corners. Okay. And so we just want to line the pieces up and I want to make sure I'm lined up at the corner. Also, if, if you're not, you know you're in trouble, right? Well, you do. Then you know that things aren't going to match up exactly. Mm -hmm. and that's what you're aiming for. But you can with this glue. It's really easy to ease things in okay. if you have to. Okay. Okay. And so I just get everything lined up nicely, making sure once again, I'm lined up front and back mm -hmm. and I press to set. I learned that a long time ago and it was like, it was a lot, it was like a light bulb went on because you think, oh, I'm just going to put those two pieces together and sew it in. Uh-uh. Yeah. You, you want to, this side you want to see this color and this side you want to see this color. You do want to make sure. And it just, it makes a difference if you start getting into the good habit of doing all that while you're working with your nine patches, it carries forth to those blocks that are more complicated. And Bernie, when we were talking about needles, what exactly, what numbers, what does she use? Well, a, a good match for this particular weight of thread is a size 70 needle. Okay. Yeah. A, sharp? A sharp needle okay. for sure because the sharp needle meets less resistance. All right. Now we have to see. The rubber's hitting the road here, man. Okay. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we've got. So I want to make sure that I set the seam 
Very important. Does that make you nervous to open this up in front of everybody? No. Wow. I think I think I trust my glue. Wow. Well, what do you think? Whoa. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then we want to make sure. Yeah, look how it really bounces up. Look at that, you guys. It really bounces yeah. up. And I like it when things are flat. And so I'm just applying a light. So no steam, I'm guessing, in your I life. don't use any steam. Okay. I don't use steam. Why? I don't use steamer pins. Steam can actually really distort your fabric. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it can cause more problems. Like you can do a fantastic job at your sewing machine, and then when it comes to the pressing, create all kinds of distortion of the fabric.